Hi everyone, this is Lisa Cronin from It's the Little Things in Card Making and I am making a series of videos to explain my conclusions on the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill pens. Um, first, I, I want to apologize. I think one of my videos was a little confusing and that video is where I kind of checked out the fuse tool to see if in fact it can transfer foil. In that same video I showed two backgrounds and those backgrounds were not done with the fuse tool. Those backgrounds were done with the We Are Memory Keepers quill pens. So I, I wanted to make that clear because I think some people were kind of um, they had some questions because I didn't make it clear in the video so I apologize but whatever confusion, frustration uh, I might have caused. So this is going to be a series of probably three videos. And because it's a lot to take in, so I wanted to kind of break it down. So I'm going to start by saying that I'm going to talk about how through trial and error and playing and testing and doing, I came to certain conclusions about what works best for me. I don't know if what I'm going to explain works will work best for you as well. I don't know what your craft is. I don't know what your art is. Mine is card making, so I'm basing all of my determinations and did all my testing based on the materials that I would use making cards. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the surfaces that you work on. And there are three surfaces. A soft surface. This is a very heavy kind of cardboard here. And this is good for some foiling. Then there is a metal shim that I use when I want to do certain other kind of foiling. And then I could use my craft mat, my glass Tim Holtz craft mat. So those would be the three surfaces I would do foiling on. Now, as far as the type of foiling on what kind of cardstock I would foil on, well, I did some testing and what I, what works best for me, the conclusion that I made is that it should be a soft kind of cardstock. One that's not really dense. Um, I talk about 110 pound Nina Sola White. That's great. I foil on that. It's wonderful. 80 pound Nina. Great. That's wonderful. Even the 65 is good. As long as it's a, a smooth surface, that's what's important. I've tried to foil on watercolor paper. I've tried foiling on um, heavy, heavy cardstock, um, other than Nina Solo White. The Nina is very, very smooth, and that's why it works. Um, Gina K, great cardstock. Their base is wonderful. However, not the best thing to foil on. It's so dense, and it's it's so tight that there's no give to it. It's it's very solid and. It's very hard for the foil to make contact with that paper and give you a, a fluid a fluid line. So that's not one that I would use. I use the hundred pound Simon says black cardstock. It works beautifully. And again, these are things that you have to try. What's in your stash, what you normally use. Um I've never tried it on, on colored paper other than um, pattern paper. And again, pattern paper is all different. It, it's made up of all different things. So you have to play and you have to see what works best um, for you. Um, trying to think. So that's so far what kind of, of a surface I work on. What type of cardstock I foil, I foil onto. What I also foil onto is um, acetate. And the acetate that I use, 
I've tried it on thick acetate and I've tried it on thinner acetate. And the one that works the best for me is the acetate that's kind of the same weight as that plastic acetate comes in your stamps. That's kind of the weight that I think the foil transfers onto best. If it's too thick, it's probably gonna resist some of the heat and therefore the transfer won't be that good. And um, again, through trial and error, this is what I figured out. Uh, the other thing is vellum. 90 pound vellum is what I would use. It's a little thicker. I think it grabs onto that, that foil beautifully or the foil grabs onto the paper beautifully. Um, I'm trying to think what else do I use? I use, um, ribbon, ribbon. You can foil onto ribbon. I've never done it. I've seen it done, but I've never done it. But I just wanted you to know that that's an option too. So again, the paper that I, you know, I use is paper that I saw gave me the result that I was looking for. And you have to play. You have to play with your stash. You, paper is not all made the same. So, you know, look and see what's going to work for you. This is what works best for me. Now we're going to talk about, and I, I have myself a little list here so I don't forget anything. Um, we're going to talk about the, the tracing and, and why I don't stamp on top of the foil and then trace on top of the foil. Um, trace directly from the foil, from the back of the foil. I don't know if you noticed, but I always keep, you know, something on my desk when I do videos because the reflection of the lights that are on metal surfaces or reflective surfaces, I find it extremely distracting. And it can actually give me a headache. <laughs> So if I'm foiling onto reflective foil and I have to, you know, make sure I get every little, you know, image, I, I can't do that. I, I kind of need to block that, you know, that reflection from the lights. Obviously, I need the lights to do the foiling, but I don't want to have to deal with that reflection. So that's why I've been working very, very hard to find something to put on top of the foil that I can trace on. And I just wanted to explain that that's, that's the reason why, you know, I've been doing these videos. This, I can't be the only one. Um, so my tracing materials, and we'll get into that. Let's get rid of this. My tracing materials are, or let's put it this way. I can transfer foil by using tissue paper, regular tissue paper, or tracing paper. The thinner, the better. I don't know how many pounds this is. Doesn't state, state it on the, uh, on the pad. We could also use carbon, which I won't use because you can't erase it if you make a mistake. I did a video where I did the testing and I said, oh, you can probably erase the carbon. You can't erase the carbon. So if you make a mistake or you get a little bit on your project, you can't erase it. So carbon is not something that I would use. Um, stencils. Stencils is a way that you can transfer an image um, through the foil. And um, you can use your positive piece to transfer. Or you can use your negative piece. Just keep in mind that if you transfer around your positive piece, your image is going to be bigger than what you're tracing. And if you trace the negative piece, your image is going to be smaller than what you're tracing. So just keep that in mind. Now, I swore by the tracing paper. I said, this is great. You can see your image. You can see right through it. You know, put your foil underneath and trace it. And that's great for some things. But it's not necessarily great for all things. And depending upon 
your pens, what you're using, how hard you're pressing down, how fast you're going. All of these variables will determine what kind of a transfer you get. Now, someone had recently told me that we are memory keepers. They're giving, you know, they first of all, these pens don't come with much instruction. And they went on their website, still a little bit more instruction, but not very much. And I gave that some thought, and I realized that there is so little instruction they can give with these pens because it foiling onto whatever you're going to foil on, there are so many variables. They, they can't tell you everything, just like I can't tell you everything. I can only say, this is what works for me. I don't know what's going to work for you. They have to have that same mindset. If they're going to say, well, these pens will do this, 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 and this, then they better be sure it does it no matter who picks up the pen and no matter what kind of paper they use. But they can't because it doesn't work on every kind of paper. They don't, they don't know what pen. They don't know how much pressure the person is going to be using. So they, they can't say, well, there's a standard here and this is the standard. No, you have to find your own standard. And that's why I'm making this video. Okay, so I just want to show you really quickly how I make my little hinge when I have um, when I have something that I want to foil. And the one thing that I want to make very clear is you don't want to use a wonky edge. You want to use a very, very straight edge when you do your hinge. And this hinge is very important. So what I do is I just make sure that the paper, the tracing paper, and the paper that I'm going to foil onto, they meet at that edge, that straight edge. Put half of the paper, half of the tape, on the paper. Turn it over, and put the other on the back. Then I just kind of make make it tight. And you don't want this. You don't want the the tape to be touching the back of the tape. So this way, when you go back and forth to make sure, okay, am I doing it right? Did I catch everything? Do I need to go back and go over something? You know, the hardest part, the hardest part of foiling is to say, okay, what did I just foil? I don't know. Do I have to go back there? Do I have to go back on that line? Well, th this happens with the tracing paper as well. There's nothing here. There is absolutely nothing on this um, on this tracing paper. I'm going to put the foil in and I'm going to make a line. Now, that line to some degree transferred a little bit. But look what happened to the tracing paper. Can you sh see that sheen? There's a sheen where I made that line. That can help you see it right there? That can help you to see where you've been. And if you're working with the quills, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Look for that sheen. If you're doing something that's intricate like this, and you're going over one flower, and you don't know, did I go over that stem? Kind of turn your paper. You can see the sheen. You can see the sheen on the paper. And I'm trying to tilt it. So you could see it. I think there's a better spot down here. Um, let me bring it up maybe a little bit more. Okay, I put a little extra, you know, a couple of dots because I added my own. You can see that sheen there. You can see the sheen on all of the flowers. And that helps you when you, you're you doing something and you want to double check and you don't want to take off you know, you don't want to open up your hinge because you don't want to, you know, kind of mess around with what's underneath it. So look for that, that shimmery kind of mark that you'll get when you go over an image. And that will help you as far as determining, oh, did I go to that area or do I still need to go back and do that area? So that also happens with the tissue paper. And the tissue paper I hinge differently. Because it is such a flimsy piece to work with, 
And typically, this tissue paper is probably good for only one or two uses. So you would stamp, and I use Memento, a tuxedo black, black, and I stamp my image. Same thing with the tracing paper. I stamp my image, and I wait for the ink to dry. Major important, major. Once that ink is dry, then you can start working. But what I do for the tissue paper, because it's, you know, it's, it's not as stiff, it doesn't keep its shape as well, I will tape it, but when I tape it, I will tape the back. So I want to make sure my tissue paper is placed properly, and I'll bend over the tissue paper. This seems to help keep the t tissue paper in line. So if you have to open up your hinge and close your hinge, there's a better chance that that tissue paper is going to fall where it was before. So that's what I wanted to um, impart on the surfaces that I stamp on, foil through, foil onto, and the surface I'm using to do my foiling. And that will be it for this video. So this is part one, probably of three, and I hope this was helpful to you. Um, again, any questions, put them in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Until next time. Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody. Um, I'm just elated at um, how many people have been commenting and liking my videos. And um, it, I'm just so pleased. I'm, I'm really pleased that I'm being um, received so well and that I'm being helpful. And um, yeah, excited. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, until next time, please. Remember, it's the little things about card making, little things in card making. Take care. Bye now.